Welcome everyone to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. I am so excited to interview the founder and CEO of Business Blueprint, Dale Beaumont. Now, Dale Beaumont is an award-winning technology entrepreneur, international speaker, and the author of 19 best-selling books. You've been busy, Dale. Uh, mm -hmm. Dale started his first business at 19 and has been building companies ever since. One of those companies is now a multi-million dollar enterprise, which has enabled Dale to become an investor, philanthropist, and to step foot in 85 countries. Dale has been featured in Forbes, The Huffington Post, Business Insider, Gizmodo, and GQ, just to name a few, with a few to give back. Uh, his passion is to give back. Dale's goal is to help more than one million 1 million, that's amazing, entrepreneurs around the world with Bizversity, a rev revolutionary product which gives you direct access to the world's best business training anywhere, anytime. Best described as the Netflix for business, Bizversity gives you exclusive access to thousands of videos, which has been produced by leading business experts from around the globe. Welcome, Dale Beaumont. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited to have you on the call. And uh, maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but I've followed your work for many, many years. And I've been to some of your events and I absolutely love your work. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to the audience today. I'm really thrilled. Yeah, you're welcome and happy to chat. So tell me a little bit about, you You have created such an amazing business. Tell me about your humble beginnings. Like where did it start? Were you someone that grew up wanting, you know, with a lemonade stand, knowing that you want to get into business? Were you that type of kid or, you know, how did it start off for you? Yeah, so I, I grew up in uh, Western Sydney, a working class uh, family. Um, and uh, my mum and dad were small business owners, uh, but worked very, very hard to kind of like, you know, um, get to, uh, you know, to, to put food on the table and to provide for, you know, three kind of uh, growing boys um, that, they, that they had. And so um, it was, um, yeah, pretty sort of like, you know, basic growing up, but we also never went without either, you know, mum and dad always worked, you know, really hard. And, um, and I probably, and later on when they talk about mentors, but my probably my mum and dad were my first, you know, mentor, especially my dad as a business owner. Um, I you know, remember him just like, uh, you know, taking calls all hours of the day, trying to serve customers. And if a job wasn't right, we'd, you know, have to go back and, you know, and fix it or, um, and so, yeah, it was, um, and I remember him, you know, doing Christmas, uh, in sending out invoices because a lot of our work was, uh, over the Christmas sort of like period. Uh, so that's where I learned a lot of, um, sort of like basic business skills, but I wasn't one of the kids that had the lemonade stand. I did have a lot of energy as a, as a kid, but my passion was actually, uh, sport. And so I did, uh, swimming and did judo. Uh, I did soccer, but then at the age of seven, I, um, my mum put me into the sport of gymnastics and I found out that, you know, I was quite good. And uh, then two years later made the state squad and then um, training just went up and up and up and was sort of on track for the Sydney 2000 uh, Olympics. And wow. training was, uh, went from, yeah, 10 hours a week to 36 hours a week in the gym by the age of like 11. So it's a very, very intense sport, probably one of the most uh, intense from a, from a very young age. Um, and so I had no time for lemonade stands or anything else because literally six hours a day at the gym. And then, you know, when I wasn't at the gym, I was at school. When I wasn't doing that, I was doing my homework. And when I wasn't doing that, I was eating and then sleeping. That was pretty much my life for eight, eight or nine years. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons from my sporting career, hard work, discipline, um, how to motivate myself. Um, but the most important thing that I learned from my sporting career was having a coach and so um, I learned a lot of lessons from my, from my coach. And then I ended up finishing my sporting career uh, at the age of, of 18. Um, and uh, I, I had a bit of like, you know, knowledge about business from my, from my dad. And I had a lot of these kind of like success principles. And so I basically then entered the real world, you know, uh, after school and, and after finishing my sporting career. And I just found because of my, my, like energy and because of my um you know training as a gymnast like i just felt that everything was just moving way too slow and i was just like what why are people just like not not like 
doing it. They're just like, you know, leaving the office at, you know, five o'clock and just like want to do the bare minimum possible just to get their paycheck. And I'm like, this is not for me. So that's when I decided to uh, start my own business. And we can talk more about that later on. And that's been 20 years ago. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I've now been in business for, for more than 20 years, had seven or eight different companies. Um, and uh and have yeah produced millions of dollars worth of uh, revenue and are now married got two kids done a lot of travel uh so happy to talk about and written 19 books along the way like you heard in the introduction so i can talk about business i could talk about uh writing books talk about uh, how to build a multi-million dollar coaching business uh if you like or how to just create a like a dream life yeah what what with at 19 what did you like what which area did you go into firstly with your business and what inspired you to choose that industry? Mm, okay. So what had happened was when I was um, 18, I, um, I sort of was about to finish school and I wasn't too sure if I wanted to go to university. Uh, and so I thought that I would sort of take a year off and I would start doing some, some courses like in the area of personal development and, um, and professional development also like I was interested in creating wealth and, and, uh, you know, making money. And so, um, I went along to a few courses and that completely opened my eyes up to this whole world of personal and professional, uh, development. And I met people like, uh, Robert Kiyosaki and Brandon Bays and Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins and, uh, um, who else? Um, oh, Tom, Tom Hopkins, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay. And I just was like, Met, absorbed by all this amazing stuff and what occurred to me was why didn't I learn any of this stuff in school yes and, yes. Up, <laughs> <laughs> and so it. I was like 18 19 and I kind of was like well you know we, we need to change the education system and get this stuff and I just realized that it was going to take like I spent a few kind of like months trying to talk to the you know the the board of education and and um you know about how they needed to evolve and change and realize that you know I was just not going to achieve anything in this kind of like you know, it, just talking to politicians and bureaucrats and things like that. So I was like, if it's to be, it's up to me and just get out there and why just like ask for permission, just do it. And yeah. so what I did is I teamed up with a guy that I went to school with um, and we started a program called Empower You, which was a personal development program for young people. Think like, you know, Tony Robbins kind of like, but for, for young people. Um, and we made it fun. We had like a DJ at the events, a smoke machine. We would do dancing. We would, we would play movie clips. Um, and then we would teach stuff like goal setting, leadership, communication, money, money management. We did like a board break. We would, um, we do all these amazing activities. So that was my first business that I started, um, back in 2000, yeah, two, late 2000, 2001. And, um, it, we yeah, completely kind of like, yeah, changed my, my life. Um, we are still running that business 20 years later. We're oh, still wow. running that, uh, that program. And, uh, so I, about 10 years ago, I passed it over to my business partner who now runs the day to day. And I just still speak at some of the uh, events from, from time to time, but we've had about 40,000 young people go through the program now that we created 20 years ago. And so it's been amazing. And, uh, we've literally yeah, changed the lives of thousands of our young people, teaching them all of this stuff, um, that, you know, many people discover later in life, you know, at a, at a much younger age. Yeah. What's, what's the biggest challenge? This is my second business. Mm -hmm. And I know when I first got into business, even the second time, it's like, I, I, I it was like, I was so green and I was, I had all of this passion and I wanted to help people, but I didn't know what direction I wanted to go. Um, how did you, you know, firstly, what are the, are the big challenges that you faced when you first started at 19? Yeah. So I think, um, oftentimes it's, you know, pretty easy, like to come up with a product or, you know, or a service, but then it's, how do you actually get the word out there, um, yeah. to, to, how do you tell people about your, 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 your product, which, you know, we call marketing, right? It's uh, all about how do you create awareness and then how do you capture that awareness into a lead? And then you've got to nurture that lead and somehow convert them into, into a sale. So most small business owners go into business because they're good at something, uh, they're not good at marketing. And yeah. so marketing is a skill that you have to learn. You've got to learn how to market yourself. And so uh, what I discovered is it doesn't matter how good you are at what you do. It's almost irrelevant. It only matters how good you are at marketing and promoting what you do. And it's a completely different, different skill set. So I realized the fact that, okay, we've got this great product, 
but you know, no, it's not going to make any difference unless we know how to, how to market it. So I started to go out there, do a number of different marketing courses, learn the basics of, of kind of how to create a compelling message and how to write a good headline and how to, um, you know, how to, uh, yeah, all, all the kind of the principles of, of marketing, you know, attention, desire, and, and all of these things. And so, um, then we started to get some, get some results. That's one of the, one of the things, another one as well is a lot of small business owners just don't understand like, you know, sort of like the finances very, very well at all. Cause it's not, and, and they, they just not very good at managing money. So it's another sort of skill set that you need to, uh, to learn and, uh, and get good at. And then there's other things like, you know, building systems and then later on hiring a team as well to sort of like help you and then managing people. How do you kind of do, do that? Um, there's websites now, social media is, uh, is, is important. Um, so there's a lot of this, uh, that's part of the challenge with, uh, with business, you know, you've got to wear many hats, you know, you can't just go, okay, I just do one thing. I just can't, having a great product is not enough. You've got to wear, you know, at least, you know, seven or eight different, um, different hats and you've got to kind of get competent in each of those, um, areas, uh, in order for your business to grow. Otherwise you might have one area that's really, you know, good and another area three week. And, you know, if it's like a kind of a wheel with different spokes, uh, unless it's kind of growing at an even pace, you know, it's just going to be a very bumpy ride and, and, uh, you may, you may fail. So, um, yeah, it's really important. The biggest thing you've got to do in business is get a rapid education. The more that you learn in business, the more that you'll earn. And so be a great student, study with lots of people, get a good coach, read lots of books, go to lots of events and maybe become part of a, a you know, program to, uh, to help you to improve your uh, business. Otherwise, you could try and figure it out on your own if you want to, but it might take you 10, 20, 30 years and most people fail you know, before they uh, succeed. So definitely get some, some uh, professional help and you'll massively increase your chances of success and, and uh, you know, eliminate the risk of failure. Yeah, love it. So what, what has been one of your uh, biggest wins in, in your life? I know it's a long, a long, long time that you've been in business, but what stands out for you that your achievements that you're really proud of? Yeah, there's, of course, there's lots of, you know, uh, financial ones, but, um, you know, after a while, you know, it's not like, um, yeah, it's not really about the money. It's really about using your, your business as a, as a vehicle to create, uh, to make your dreams happen and also to bless the lives of other people as well. So on a, on a personal level, um, we, 12 years ago, my wife and I decided that we would, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was to travel the world with our kids and to, um, and we wanted to explore the world ourselves, a bit selfish, but we wanted to take them with us and we wanted to expose them to different cultures, different religions, different foods, different people, different ways of life, different, uh, you know, uh, philosophies in, in history and, um, all of these things that you learn, you know, uh, by, by, by traveling. And so we decided to, to, um, sort of like make some decisions around our life and our businesses to do two months working in our business. And then one month we leave and we go somewhere in the world and we live there for a month and we travel. So we do two months work, one month travel, two months work, one month travel. So we've been doing that now for 12 years, uh, spending about four months traveling the world, been to eight or seven continents, 85 countries around the world. So that's the thing that I'm most proud of. It's not the money that I made. It's the, it's the experiences that I've been able to have and the memories that I've been able to create along the way uh, with my, um, with my family. Uh, and then I'm also really proud of the fact that seven years ago, we started supporting a charity called hands across the water. And our company has now helped to raise more than $2 million for that particular charity, which now supports 350 children, um, a year. And, uh, so yeah, I, um, they're just a, you know, a few of the things that sort of like stand out. And then of course it's the work that we do, you know, what we do for what I do all day as a, as a, as a, a coach for business owners is, you know, ch change people's lives. And so one of the things I'm most proud of is the thousands of people's lives that we've been able to change and, um, and see them achieve their dreams. And sometimes I've gotten more, you know, satisfaction around uh, seeing my clients, you know, succeed and seeing them do all sorts of amazing things, whether it's taking their kids to Disneyland or, you know, one of our clients just bought a hundred acre farm because that was his passion. That was his dream. And so, you know, to, 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 to be able to, to help people's dreams come true is the most rewarding thing of all. Yeah, absolutely. And, and how have you grown? Like if you think about the 19 year old Dale that started his business, I often think about this with me <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, and who you were then and who you are now. What, how would you explain that? How have you grown? 
Uh, yeah, like I've grown kind of like, you know, I think in every way that a person, you know, can grow. I like to think I'm, you know, still uh, the same kind hearted person that I was then that I am now. So I suppose some things never change, but like physiology, like, you know, there's no cell in my body that's the same. Like, you know, every sort of like cell will rejuvenate, you know, every five to seven years. So in a way you're like a, you know, quite literally a brand new person. But in terms of like, I suppose I'm just a lot uh, more knowledgeable and um and then wiser in, in so many different areas and aspects of, of business and then of course about life and relationships and about you know being a parent and about you know increasing my knowledge around uh you know our history around um you know politics around um yeah lots of different things i just i love learning and so you know that's my uh, thing that I uh, you know, love learning about business, but I also just love learning about, you know, life and engineering and any, anything that kind of like is something that I'm fascinated by. I just love the fact that, you know, I'm just yeah constantly able to, to find things that I'm interested in and go, mm, how does that work? And then, you know, study it and figure it out. And, and that's what's so amazing about YouTube. Now, if you've got a question about, you know, anything, uh, you know, you just Google it and um, the, the answers are right there and you can just learn all about it. Yeah, I love that. And I think for me, when I'm learning and I felt the same journey like that, I, I was never into politics, for instance, ever. In fact, my dad used to say, you know, don't talk about politics because you'll get into an argument. But it was, it's only been the last few years I've started to, to listen and, and learn. Uh, and what I've noticed is the different aspects that I'm learning, whether it be history, whether it be politics, the links that it has to everything else that you know whether yeah. the link to business the link to to you know your personal life of being a mom or a dad it all the links um and it's just for me it's so much it's being that holistic in your learning so that uh you know instead for of sure. looking at these different areas learning all of those different areas and um being more holistic about uh learning all about that so I love that. With um, how's your business been with COVID? How how has it affected? How have you had to navigate through COVID? Yeah, so it's been um, you know, it's been interesting. Um, we have um, you know, the first thing that we wanted to focus on was how do we support our clients? You know, before you know our own business, it's just like you know, we just want to help as many of our. We got four four hundred and fifty clients that we're working with right now that are all small business owners. And, uh, and some, and so it's a bit of kind of like, I suppose, like triage kind of going, going on in terms of business. Like this person's going to be fine. This person needs a little bit of help. This person needs a lot of help. And so yeah. what we tried to do was to kind of really, cause there was, you know, people that we have clients in the travel industry, for example, that have been badly affected and kind of know about that amount of like clever marketing is going to, uh, you know, kind of like get them out of this hole, like right now. And so what we've had to do is, you know, um, yeah, it's basically just support them uh, in, in other ways, help them to maybe, you know, pivot, help them to find other income streams um, to just help them to, um, yeah, basically bridge the gap um, so that they can then, you know, rebuild once things kind of like, you know, open up um, again. So um, that's where our focus has been. We've doubled down on, on all of our support, transitioned all of our events to online, um, I've now got someone sort of dedicated to helping our clients. They're just a phone call away. If anyone's stuck or if anyone's struggling, just pick up the phone. I've actually paid for some of my clients to do counseling, you know, if they need it as well. And uh, so we've yeah pulled out all stops to try and make sure that our clients, you know, feel the, feel the love uh, from us and know that we're, that we care uh, in terms of, uh, so we've done a really good job of, of supporting our clients and our retention has been really strong. Um, what we haven't been able to do uh, up until just recently is, uh, is sort of like use our, our current sort of recruiting model. The recruiting model that we've had for the last 10 years has been doing four big national tours every single year where we travel around the country and we get somewhere between, uh, you know, 70 to uh, 100 people join our program every quarter. And, um, and so that, um, that hasn't happened because our last two tours um, have been canceled. And so we've had to find other ways in order to, um, uh, to basically, yeah, to, to do our, uh, sort of like client generation. And so we've now transitioned to an online uh, format for those. And we've been doing those for the last few weeks and they're starting to, to uh, really become, um, do what they're starting to work. And now we just got to scale that. And, but the exciting thing for us is that because we've now been able to do a lot of our, our programs uh, remotely without the need to you know, be in the same room, 
with people, we have now started to expand into America. And just this morning, we had someone from Los Angeles that joined our, our program. And so that's the, the sort of silver lining for us is that we've now potentially can start marketing to people all around the world and have a truly global business where for the last 10 years, we have mainly focused on Australia and New Zealand and tried to be the best, the best at what we do in this part of the world. But now because of COVID, uh, we can now help anyone, anywhere, um, which is a huge opportunity. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, what advice would you give people in business right now that are maybe feeling like they're stuck? They're stuck through, you know, they've got this, you know, everything's happened. And I, I can see the different mindsets happening with COVID from the start when it happened in March to now we're in what nearly October. Uh, what would be your advice for a business owner that feels like they're stuck? Yeah. So I, I suppose that, um, yeah, you've got to just decide, like, do you, do you want things to stay as they are or do you want, you want things to, uh, to, to improve? Um, and you just got to, um, you know, I, I've subscribed to this philosophy that I've, that they're basically that you create your, your own economy. And so you can't control what happens out there, but you can, can choose how to respond and you can either use it as an excuse, um, you know, because of COVID therefore, you know, I'm going to kind of, you know, um, start contracting and shrinking and all that type of stuff, or I'm going to be solution orientated. I'm going to find a way I'm going to, because, you know, when, certain businesses struggling there's there's other businesses that are succeeding so find out what what those people are you know are doing and uh and start just you know start evolving start um adapting start start trying new new things as well there's always a solution to every uh problem uh that you're in you just need to um yeah basically stop making excuses and and start you know putting stuff into action um, my, one of my mentors said to me once you can make money you can make excuses you can't make both and so, um, you know, don't focus on, on, on stuff that you can't control. Just focus on what you can control. Yeah. And I love, you know, one of the things I think I've really learned because in business, the business is, is full of uncertainty, right? And, um, but I think now that there has been so much uncertainty um, thrown at people, uh, this is a real, this has been a really great, test in some sense for us to either lean in as leaders or lean out um and because there's so much uncertainty as you said it's about having that certainty within you mm. so because you can control you can only control what you can control um yep. and I love you, you're talking about how you can create that uh you know the the wealth that you can create or the income or the, the sales that you can create within your space rather than looking what's outside of you uh, i think that's really powerful so what, as a leader, and of course, you know, you're running a, a huge, well, you've got different, how many businesses have you got now? Uh, six. Six businesses. So you're running six businesses. How do you, how do you keep your mind and your body and, and, you know, yourself strong as a leader so that you can perform at your peak? Yeah. So, um, you know, body wise, I go to the gym three times a week and, you know, I'm going to be there in half an hour. So uh, I, um, you know, go to the gym. I, you know, have a, like a lap pool. I do laps, you know, I have a sauna as well. So I just, you know, try to make sure that I look after my body in most of the time I, you know, I do eat quite, uh, you know, quite, quite well as well. And so, um, yeah, that, like I, body wise, I feel good in terms of, you know, mental, um, definitely having, that um, physical outlet uh, helps as, as well. But then making sure that, you know, I'm spending time with my you know, wife and, and kids as well, because I think if you don't, then that forms a lot, creates a lot of pressure and you start feeling guilty. And then that just kind of consumes a lot of your, your mental energy. Um, and then, yeah, the, because of kind of like those things are taken care of, you know, health and, and family, I, I feel most of the rest of the time, I feel good and I feel energized and I feel excited to get into work. I'm, you know, we, we uh, have a strong kind of like vision for our business and, and a mission as well that drives us and, and values that, um, you know, um, basically influence our, our um, kind of attitudes and, and, and beliefs and behavior as a company. And so uh, then it's just a matter of, you know, just get stuck in and, and uh, when I show up to work, it's like, how do I help more people today? Yeah, I love, I love that. And, and what habits do you have 
Uh, do you have particular habits like you mentioned you're going to go to the gym today? But are there things that, like, you, as a leader of yourself, are there specific habits that you have every single day or every single week that you stick to? Yeah, so there's the level of, of like physical fitness that I think yeah. just you know happens, which is uh, which is good, and that um, that is there. So I know that you know my 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 body and my energy, you know, is is um, yeah, is is kind of like I'm looking after myself. Uh, then from there, uh, there will be um, we we follow in our business ninety day action plans, and so this this sort of like you know formula of focusing on uh, five core priorities every ninety days. So I have my ninety day uh, plan. I block out time, you know, throughout the week where I'm actually going to work on my ninety day action plan um, yeah. to get stuff done. So time blocking, you know, is is really important, and making commitments and then sticking to those. Um, those commitments. We also have certain rituals around team meetings. We have like a weekly team meeting. We have like a quarterly uh, retreat that we do uh, as well. So uh, they're all uh, locked into the to the diary. I have sort of like social events that you know I'll book in um, you know once a month or twice a month with sort of uh, to catch up with friends and, uh, and and family as well. So by controlling you know my my diary uh, in that that way, it just uh, makes yeah it means that all the things that that need to happen will get done. And then the rest of the time, you know, I can be creative and I can, um, you know, chat with people on my team and come up with new solutions and, and, uh, and do other things. Beautiful. So we've, um, we've, you mentioned uh, having a coach, what mentors along the way have you had? And I know you mentioned a couple Tony Robbins and Jim Rowan um, that, that have really stuck in your mind that, that, you still reflect, you still maybe hear their voice today when you're doing stuff. You think, oh, that's what someone said. Uh, you know, who are the mentors that have really, really stuck in your mind that have helped you? Yeah, like a lot of those people that I mentioned before, I can see some of the books behind you as well, like, you know, Stephen Covey and, and Tony Love Robbins. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, all of those, those, those people I've, you know, kind of like learned from uh, over the years and taken you know, just a little piece from, 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 from each, um, each, each person. Um, so yeah, I just think that, that, that I've had so many, you know, mentors throughout my, my life and people that, uh, and anyone that's basically you know, sharing knowledge and wisdom and, and their perspective. I'm just like, yeah, I, I love uh, learning. And I think it's important that, you know, 20 minutes a day, you know, you need to be having some type of uh, positive, you know, personal development, either through books, if you love reading or podcasts now, um, there's thousands of videos on YouTube that you can access. Um, so the information has never been more accessible and freely available um, than it is to today. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and talking about mentors and having people that support you in business, I love your business blueprint program. Um, and because that, that's what it does. Can you tell, tell me a little bit about that program? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, we, our mission is to help business owners to build the business of their dreams. And we've done that for more than 10 years now. We have helped thousands of, of, of people to uh, improve their business through a program that we run that goes for, goes for 12 months. And um, we work on 10 different sort of core areas uh, within a business. And underneath that, we have several strategies that we, uh, we work on. And it's, uh, it's a process, but if people follow the, the process, then they can achieve some amazing success. And we've helped now people, one of our clients started a business from scratch through our program. And in the last three and a half years has done more than $10 million in sales in this brand new kind of business that we helped launch throughout, through our program. And uh, yeah, I could list off hundreds of, of success stories like that of people who we have, uh, have helped um, to, to grow their, um, their, their businesses. And so it's, it's amazing. And uh, um, I get also give away a lot of free content to start with. So everyone can start there. Yeah. There's a workshop that I run called 52 ways. Um, 52 ways.com is the website. So you can go there, you can get three hours of free business training. It's amazing. And then if you want to work with us, you can then, um, yeah, you can then apply and then we'll chat to you. And if you're right fit, then we'll work with you over, over 12 months and you can have access to all of our resources. We've got now more than two and a half thousand videos that you get access to. We've got training checklists, templates on everything. It's just it's incredible values. Anyone that wants to grow a successful business, save time, save money, um, that should definitely check it out. Yeah, great, great. And with with your events now, so you're doing them online uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, fantastic. What do you what do you foresee as the future, Dale, in regards to you know people saying the new normal, right? Um, my business as well was all live events. I just absolutely loved it. Like that was where my mojo was, right? Being in a room, being with all my students, I just absolutely loved it. And so I've had to pivot and change my business accordingly as well this year. But what is your thought process in regards to events going, live events going forward? Do you think that they're going to, that people are going to jump in the room? What are your thoughts around that? Um. My thoughts are that um, that thirty percent of of live events will never come back, um, and and that's because that people now have formed a new habit, and people now like you know look at the number of people that have been introduced to, to that have Zoom accounts. Like Zoom has just you know absolutely uh, exploded, and many other platforms as well. And even though like online training has existed for more than ten years. You know, people have not been forced to change or to adopt uh, because they, you know, because we haven't had to. But now we have. It's surprising that how many people have actually um, gotten used to it and are more comfortable. And even just recently, like I see my accountant, you know, every couple of months, and he only lives about half an hour from from me. But just the other day, we're like, how about we just jump on Zoom because it was like half an hour to get there, half an hour to get back. That's an hour of time. We can be just as productive like you and I are right now now as opposed to me you know spending an hour in the car and so let's just meet on zoom so i was like okay and so there are thousands of meetings like that that just don't need to take place uh you know th the same room but they're still face to face like we're still looking at each other right now um so i think that uh and that's the same as well for online training there will but there'll still always be a market for the people that want the human experience and want to come to a live event and there will be a lot of people that will rebound and go i just want to get back out of the house and i'm really a craving and i'm really missing and i want to go along to you know be around the fire and i want to want to see you know kind of my mentor in the flesh that, that will still happen, but for a lot of the smaller, uh, like, you know, kind of like less critical kind of like uh, meetings, um, then I think that they, they're definitely going to take a, uh, you know, a hit. Um, but um, I think it's going to be good for everyone because it makes people, uh, you know, a lot more productive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what's your vision for the next 12 months or two years or five years in your business? Have you got huge goals or... What yeah, you... like I've got, I've always had, had big goals, but you yeah. know, now for, for me, it's not so much about, you know, taking over the world and, you know, being the biggest, you know, uh, or, or the best. It's just about, uh, you know, how to create, you know, a great, you know, life for, for me and my loved ones and how I can help other people. So, you know, already we've got a nice, you know, uh, just, you know, sizable business and we're going to just continue to grow. Like, um, one of the things that I've never wanted, to, I've seen a lot of people come into, you know, my industry and just like go like a take off like a rocket, but oftentimes they come crashing down, you know, kind of like a year or two later on, uh, because they just haven't, you know, built at a steady, steady kind of gradual pace. And so, you know, my philosophy is I don't need to be the biggest or the best. I just want to be around the longest. And so, um, you know, I just, uh, just want to be consistent year on year. Um, and then just continue to put more money into, into investments. Um, so, you know, so we've got other kind of like options. Um, and then uh, I, I love investing in, in uh, other businesses as well. So there's a number of other companies that I've invested in. So I've got a portfolio of companies now that I um, am, am building, um, but they're all run by other people. So I'm just kind of like the silent uh, partner. So that's been fun uh, for me to uh, see those businesses kind of grow and just to be creative again, because one of the things about having a business that's more than 10 years old, you know, you could know what works and, and it's not like, you know, the challenge of doing something new is, is, um, is gone. And so um, what I'm doing now is, yeah, having some fun, doing some property developments now as well. And I just love learning. So anything that's taking me to a new place, anything that's challenging me uh, is great. When we can, we'll go back to doing more travel and then just a matter of like teaching, teaching, inspiring, helping others. That's kind of what drives me most. Yeah, love it. Have you got any books on the horizon? I know you've had you've wrote so many books, which is brilliant. I'm I'm yeah. on my first book, Dale. I'm so excited. Okay, uh, but it's Great. challenging. And for me, it's been really challenging because it's getting all everything that's in here out. Uh, and then what's the book called? 
I'm not telling. That's okay. <laughs> I haven't got it out yet. But it's all about the 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 book is all about if you think about uh, Tony's. If you've read Tony's Awaken the Giant yeah, Within, yeah. Um, it, like this is one of the books that I refer to all the time. Um, I want my book to be like that. I want it to be something that people can go through life and want to go back to my book. And I want it to have folded pages and highlighted pages um, like I do with, with the books that I love. Uh, that's what I'm really looking for, for, for a book like that. There's someone just and, and wants to pass it on. Uh, and nice. think of all of your books that you've got, how many, you know, the, the, the thing that I love about what we both do is that, and I love your, you can hear your passion for helping people so much. And, and that I really resonate with that because that's why I do what I do. Uh, and you know, the fact that, you know, you're, when you, you're helping someone in the room or whether you've got your, your book out there, it's like this ripple effect that you have and hmm. you don't even know who you've helped. Like you, you might yeah. think that you've helped that person, um, but you've also might've helped their partner, their children, their grandmother, you know, and, and I like to think of it as, as this legacy that you can leave. Uh, you know, when, when I'm gone, that someone's opening my book and reading it or that someone's still talking about, Oh, I remember that Dal Beaumont, you know, he really helped my grandmother, you know, <laughs> um, that's, I love to hear, hear that from you, that you've got this passion to help people and this legacy, um, that you want to have. And, and I think books give that, you know, it's something that people pass on. Um, so have you got any ideas of, of any more books coming out? Yeah, I, I'm kind of, um, uh, I'm pretty happy with what I've done so far. So I haven't got any that I can, like got to get this one out there, but you know, I've done 19. I'm just happy to, you know, kind of like chill for a while on the <laughs> book front. Uh, we um, are doing lots of uh, online events. And so, you know, um, that's really um, uh, working for us. And I love the sort of like format of, uh, of, of doing that and providing immediate um, kind of like help because just, somebody will buy a book and they never actually you know fully kind of like read it so you know doing the online events and making sure that they commit is uh yeah. is, is um uh, yeah important um and uh probably you know more producing more kind of like videos and, and other other things as well and then maybe i'll come back to books again in yeah. in a you know well you've done 19 years. i'll give you a break right mm. <laughs> i have not done like a quarter <laughs> so yeah a quarter of one <laughs> i'm getting there i'm getting there uh, how can people uh, find out more about you, follow you, Dale? Yeah, um, probably the easiest is to just go to my personal website, which is dalebeaumont.com. So just Google me, as they say. And then from there, there are links to different um, things that I do. You'll see um, our business blueprint program. Uh, also the event that I run, which is a free business workshop called 52 Ways. And then also um, links to other software products that I have, one called Moby Mag, one called uh, Bizversity and other things as well. So yeah, just go to my website um, and you can find out more there. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, are you ready for your rapid JJ rapid fire question? I'm going to do my best. I don't <laughs> know how I'll go here, but let's go. Easy, easy. All right. So let's go. Best piece of advice given to you best piece of advice given to me wow there's just <laughs> so much uh i just think um you know it just would be just li live your dreams like you know we've only got one sort of like life and um so you know just just you know get out there and do stuff and, and make it happen and yeah. um yeah just love it so that's it favorite book Favorite book, um, one I just reread was The Four Hour Week by Tim Ferriss. Just, uh, you know, yeah, that was one of the things that inspired me to get out there and travel more and, and um, you know, live, live the life. Yeah, love it. Who would play you in a movie? Who would play me in a movie? Um, I'm not sure. Like, um, I was just got to think of someone that. Yeah, <laughs> they would be younger than me. Like, I'm just, you want someone know. younger than you? Maybe um, playing my younger self, I think, um, <laughs> or someone older than me. I, I really don't know. Like, um, I used to like Johnny Depp when I was uh, when I was young. I used to love watching, um, you know, his his movies. So yeah, who knows? Yeah, but, say Johnny uh, Depp. He's about twenty years older than me. 
<laughs> the younger version of him then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what, what's one thing on your bucket list that you haven't done yet? Uh, one thing on my bucket list, uh, was, there's hundreds of things I'm still going to do, but, uh, well, this one is coming true very soon. I just bought a, like, um, I got my motorbike license, wanted to, uh, you know, ride bikes with my, my, my dad and, uh, and to do some outback sort of touring and things like that. So, um, that one is, uh, is coming true. Um, another one, I, there's this boat that I would love to get. It's called a silent yacht and it's just all solo kind of uh, powered and it's just glides through the water. So yeah, there's lots of things that I would uh, love to do and, and continue to do more charity work as well uh, overseas. Yeah. Beautiful. If you could trade lives with anyone for one day, whether they're alive or dead, who would you, <laughs> <laughs> who would you trade lives with? Um, oh my gosh. Um, you know, maybe, uh, like a, um, it'd be interesting to see what it would be like to, you know, to be like a prime minister, of, you know, for a day and, yeah. and, uh, just be in that sort of like, you know, position of responsibility and authority and being able to, um, you know, to, to make some, yeah, some, some like big changes sort of in the world. So it's something that I haven't ruled out. Maybe one day, yeah. you know, uh, getting politics, um, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Three words that describe you um energetic um ambitious and kind beautiful if you could have five people to come over for dinner anyone mm. who would they be and if they're dead or alive <laughs> okay uh probably would be right now maybe like uh, someone like elon musk would be amazing to uh to meet with and talk about yeah all the amazing things that he's doing um yeah. to to change the world um you know love to like <laughs> somebody like uh um julius caesar or or napoleon um yeah. you know or william shakespeare i suppose yeah you, there's so much we know about current like day people there's so much we wish we knew you know about people like uh you know william shakespeare that is in like Ramses the Great and like one of the uh, Egyptian pharaohs, um, you know, Alexander the Great as well. So I'd love to like, you know, have dinner with those guys and, you know, and really get, get to know uh, them and all the things that, um, yeah, that, that, that sort of like, so there's so much that we yeah, yeah, don't know about those guys. Yeah, absolutely. If you could have one superpower, what would you have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll probably be being able to find uh find lost lost uh relics and you know and treasures i think of things like the dead skis the, the dead um sea scrolls and the uh uh even like tutankhamun's tomb and things like that i just uh, think that if you go to egypt that they say that you know more than 80 percent of you know the things have not been discovered yet and they're kind of like an underground and there's just so much like history and, and lost knowledge and, and wisdom that I'd love to be able to scatter all around the world or that's uh, sunken to the bottom of the ocean. And so I would love to be able to just like go around the world and go dig here, you know, or send down the submarine right at this, these coordinates and then to be able to, uh, you know, find stuff. I think things like flying and invisibility, you know, all that stuff, you know, uh, I think is, um, yeah, it's kind of like fun and cool, but I just don't think it's going to offer the world as much, um, uh, you know, as much of a gift that, that, that finding, yeah, kind of like lost treasures and relics will do. Yeah, that'd be fascinating. What, um, what TV sitcom family would you be a member of? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think which... Uh, which was I didn't watch a lot of TV growing up because I was always at the, uh, at the gym. Um, and then in my twenties, I watched a bit of like, uh, what, you know, friends and Seinfeld. So I'm not too sure what, uh, what, what family I suppose I, yeah, need, <laughs> I need to watch more TV to answer that question. <laughs> oh, we'll finish off with what legacy would you love to be remembered for? you know, just, just being someone that had a positive impact in this world and that, that, uh, helped a lot of people. Um, and so I think that I'm, 
you know, already have it done that, but I, there's obviously more to do. There's a lot more people to, to help. So, um, yeah, I just would like to you know, have more people say, you know, the reason why I've achieved this, uh, you know, is because I had someone that, you know, helped me and, and, uh, believed in me and kind of gave me the tools. And, uh, so yeah, if I can be responsible for, you know, helping other people, like, you know, I was helped and inspired by all the other gurus that I mentioned before. I think that's just the, you yeah, know, that, that's the ultimate. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Dale, for your time today. It was, it's been such a pleasure and I love learning from people. Every time I do a podcast, I learn something, whether it be, you know, <laughs> what, you know you've just reminded me about the book that, you know, the four hour week and I'm thinking, oh, I should be yeah, yeah. doing that again. Like it's just, it, <laughs> I always get something uh, from someone that I, I interview, but as I said to you at the start, I've admired your work. Um, even my EA, I said to her, once she, I said, oh, you know, I'm interviewing Dale Beaumont. She's like, Dale Beaumont, I absolutely love him. I've been following him for years. And um, I think she went on an event you just had the other day online. I think you had a webinar yeah. or something online that she went on that she absolutely loved. So I love your work. I love how, uh, more so, I love your mission and your vision that it's, it's really about helping people. And that comes across mm -hmm. with everything that you do, with all of that great content and value that you give people for free, which is just yeah. phenomenal. Um, but you also, you also get, you know, as I said, I've been to your live events and you're giving so much value and service to people. Uh, and you'll never know all the people that you've helped. So I want to say thank you from me because um, even, you know, when I went to your events, you gave me some really great techniques and strategies that helped my business. So thank you so much. And, uh, and thank you for helping all the other business owners out there as well. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Great to chat you. with you. And now you can go right. off to the gym. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.